Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Nick DiVirgilio and this is a Sonar SQ-1 drum kit. I'm at the Sonar factory in Bad Berleburg, Germany. Let's go see how these drums are made. Okay, we're inside the factory now and I'm joined by Mr. Carl Heinz Menzel, brand manager for Sonar Drums. Thank you so much for having me to the factory and showing me the drum making process. Now we're in the, the wood room here where all the veneers and the different plates are. So tell us what's going on in this particular room. We have all different kinds of veneers here, outside veneers, inside veneers. As you know, we have SQ-1 series, we have vintage series, we have ProLat series, and we have SQ-2. But today we want to focus a little bit on SQ-1. And what we can see here, this is the raw material, the plates for SQ-1 drum sets. Okay. And basically, we are using two different plates, a three-ply plate, three millimeter, and a one-ply with one millimeter. The reason for this is, in the SQ-1 series, we have a nine-ply bird shell on the bass drums and snare drums, and we have seven-ply shells, seven millimeters, on tom-toms and floor toms. On this big saw, they doing the pre-cutting. Right now, he is showing us the 20-inch bass drum. The pre-cutting takes place here, and the final cutting, the precisely one over there in the shell pressing department, you know. But he prepares the bass drum, snare drum, tom-toms, floor toms, everything. All right, Carl, I find this extremely interesting. Sonar is the only drum company that makes their snare wires in-house like this special. Okay, in general, I have to say we are using also here different materials. Basically, we're using stainless steel, we are using brass, and we're using bronze wires. Okay. Because they all have different hardness, different thickness, and that's why they create different sounds. Keeping this process, this manufacturing process here in-house, is very, very important for us because the snare wire is a very, very major part of the snare drum sound, you know? Yeah. And what we see in particular here, this is the snare wire especially made now for the SQ-1. Okay. And the SQ-1 snare wire comes with stainless steel wires. So Carl, you were also showing me this, the end plate of the snare wires and how it's also unique for how the snare wires work and the sound. Can you explain what this piece is? Yeah. In general, we're paying attention also on the details. You know? of course, Even yeah. a little thing like this must be is special. And what you can see, if you see this profile, the shape of the plate, it allows the string to come underneath, below the end plate, out on top, and make sure the end plate sits fully on the resonator head. Because the last thing you need on the snare drum is if you hit the snare and the, the snare wire rings forever. So we've seen the precise cutting at the saw. Now explain the next process here. All the three plates going through the gluing machine. Okay. Before it goes into the pressing mold. And the thing is the total stability of the shell has been supported by the number of plies. Right. Because if we talk about nine ply, we're talking about nine times cross laminated, which gives them the maximum stability. Okay. But also a combination with the glue, because this is a kind of two component glue which is mixed here together. We don't buy the glue, we make the glue. And then the high pressure of the pressing system and the temperature into the press. This creates the stability and the absolutely rounded yes. of, the, of the drum. Of they the all drum. work together. Something more important to say, if the shell comes out of the press, you can take the shell back to the saw and cut the shell all the way through the shell will not jump this way. Because when it comes out, the shell is tension free. That's why we call our manufacturing systems on shell, we call it CLTF, cross laminated tension free. So now the shell is coming out of the press. Right. This is where we get to the process of making the bearing edge. And then what are the steps that goes through next? The next step after pressing is to cut the drum shell on the side. Okay. Because it is oversized on purpose. And the next step is to go with the shell to the sanding machine. And this sanding machine makes sure the edge of the drum shell is absolutely flat and even. After this, we go to this machine where we put on 
the 45 degrees bearing edge. Okay. You see the special tooling in there, it's 45 yeah. degrees. Right. And the other thing is that the spindle can go up and down. So if it goes up, that means this tool creates, we call it the sharp bearing edge. Right. This is what we usually doing on the snare tom and floor tom. Okay. And on the base from the spindle moves a little bit down. And so we're creating a soft bearing edge, which gives the bass drum a little bit more low end, a little power. bit more power. Yeah. And after this is done, the whole shell goes on another metal block. Right. And there they check with a piece of paper around the shell. Because I don't need to tell you as a professional drummer how important it is that the bearing edge is absolutely flat. Perfect, yeah. Okay, this is a lacquering department here. And what we do here, this is the first step of lacquering. So what we do here is all the drum shells, they get lacquered from inside okay. to protect all the drum shells from moisture. Sonar only uses water-based lacquering material. Now I see the drums going over to this section here where there's a white coating on the outside of the drum. Exactly. What is that? We have four different colors right. in the SQ1 series. And Each shell who gets a lacquering, like the black, the red, the green, or the azure, they're all getting the first lacquering step to seal the surface. And this will be done two times. So they're going to this lacquering cabin, lacquer one time with the white first coating, drying out, and then they go there the second time. And then after this, they go to the sanding department. Okay. This is the sanding process. This needs to be done before the shells get lacquered with the final coating. Okay. All by hand. We are not taking machines because the pressure of the machine might be too high, you know, and destroy the lacquering, the coating. So after the sanding, the shell goes to the next department and they put the final coating on. This is the final finish. You can have it absolutely setting or you can have, have it shiny. Okay. You know, and this is, depends on how he is mixing it together. Okay. Yeah, and you can tell when he sprays the color on, it looks shiny when he sprays yeah, it yeah, on, sure. but then it dries that it dries. satin finish. It's, exactly. Yeah. And then, after lacquering, they put it on the rotating drying process. The shell rotates and prevents the color from dripping and moving. Makes it nice know. and even, yeah. Absolutely. So, let's go to the next part of the process. Okay. Okay, okay Carl, I know Some of your drums do get wraps, not all of them, mm -hmm. but the Vintage Series, SQ2, can get wraps if people would like to have them ordered that way. So what is the process that goes on in this room? Okay, we have a two-step process here in this room. Step number one is the gluing. So we have a special machine here. The machine carries the glue on top and the roll adds the glue on the whole surface of the wrap finish and in the second step, in the second round, on the whole surface of the drum shell. Okay. So that means both surfaces are fully glued all the way. And then we go over to this machine, and on this machine, the wrap finish gets pressed with high pressure onto the shell. The shell makes one turn, complete turn, and the wrap finish is sitting under high pressure on the, on the shell. I know many of our competitors around the world They're using a different system. They're using double face tape on both sides, on top and on the bottom. But in the middle, if you touch the shell, you can hear there is air in between. Right. And we know in this case, the wrap finish acts, the wrap material acts like a, like a muffle system because the shell cannot really vibrate free, you right. know. And that's why we're using this system. It should not have a negative effect on the vibration. Okay. Okay, Carl, please explain to us the drilling process. This process is a little bit different than to many other working steps and descending steps you have seen before. For example, the polishing, the sanding, all handmade. But we also try to combine into the whole manufacturing process technology. And here we are talking about a computer-controlled drilling and milling machine. There is a vertical holder unit who holds all the different diameters and tools. The shell makes a turn, 360 degrees, and after this, all the holes, all the drillings are done. OK, 
okay, they're almost drums. They're almost full musical instruments now. Right, right. The assembling uh, process contains the assembling of the fittings of the lux, right. the assembling of the bass drum spur, bass drum brackets. But what I want to show you, also this little piece here, the lux, the preparation and the pre-manufacturing is also handmade. There's no machine puts this stuff together, you know. Right. We have a tune safe system in each single lug. Right. The tune safe system, as you know, prevents the screw from backing off, right. even under hard playing condition. Right. And the treading, this is all handmade, so okay. they put it all together. Furthermore, we are using a kind of Torx system. Torx means the fittings, they do not have any treadings okay. inside. The screw, the Torx screw, makes the threading. Okay. And furthermore, I mean, all these single steps, if we're talking about all this handmade thing, that means every handmade step is also quality control. Because today, quality control is not taking place at the end of the processes yeah. to find out what is wrong. Today, quality management and quality control contains in every every single working step. Every employee in this manufacturing chain is responsible for the quality. So at the end, we expect to have the best quality product coming out. All right, Carl, a very special part of the SQ-1 drum mm -hmm. is the sound sustainer. Exactly. So can you explain these parts and mm -hmm. what she's putting together over there? The secret about this is we would like to increase the sustain. Okay, and basically here we are talking about three components. This one is already two component part. We're talking about the rubber part, okay. and we're talking about this rubber part including the assembling screws. And on the other side of the rubber part assembled the metal plate. But the metal plate and the assembling screws, they are absolutely not connected. They are disconnected by the rubber. That means if we assemble this on the tom-tom, the sound, the vibration gets interrupted and basically what the vibration stays in the shell is yeah. not moving through the hardware into, into the floor, floor right. you know. And the thing is, we are not only using this system at the tom-toms, we are also using it at the floor tom brackets. Yeah. Because the effect, if you have a floor tom sitting on the ground and you hit it, mm -hmm. and then you lift it up and you hit it again, it's like day and night. Yeah. And this is exactly what this sound sustainer is creating, a maximum sustain on all the toms and floor toms. Okay, I can see that he's tuning the snare drum, but do you tune all of the drums in the set before you put them in the box and ship them? No, we do not, because of a special reason. Most of the drum sets are nest packing. That means you put the bass drum into the carton, into the bass drum, the floor tom, into the floor tom, the tom tom. But what we do, we tune every individual snare drum. And the advantage is we are not doing this because we want to say to the customer, this is the best snare drum sound, because everybody has a different taste. You know? right. But what we want to achieve is, if the box arrives, the customer or the store or whoever, you open the box of the Sonos snare drum, you take out the Sonos snare drum, and the Sonos snare drum sounds brilliant, because everything is adjusted. Yeah. But the first impression, as we say in German, is the best impression, sure. the most important impre impression. You know? That's why we do this. We must be nearing the end of the process. Right, Nick. And what we can see here, this is one of the final steps. The person is not only cleaning each individual instrument, the person is also obliged to check the quality, to check if the positioning of the fittings is right, to check if the chrome surface is right. And as soon as she checked everything, they add on a personally name card so the consumer can see. The name card says, OK, we hope you are satisfied with the product you purchased from Sonor. I am personally responsible for the quality control. If there's any complaints, it's me. As I mentioned before, every single step in the manufacturing process is a quality control. But sure. this is the final one with the card identification of our employee. So they covered the whole warehouse operation. This is one of the most important departments in our warehouse, we're talking about the service department. Customer service, I don't need to tell you how important it is, especially if we talk about customers buying a sonogram. And after sales service is getting more and more important, you know. We call this department 24-hour service. Okay. Means 
we make sure that the part is on the way to our customer within 24 hours. You know, we have a distribution partner in the United States. They have quite a good inventory on spare parts as well. And mainly, we are not talking about broken parts. Most of the time we're talking about parts missing, but it is important. We take care about it and we take it serious. We right. take it serious for our customers. We're back in the showroom, back in front of this beautiful SQ1 drum kit. Carl, thanks so much for the day at the factory. Thanks for showing us around and showing us how these drums are built, the quality of the product. It's been a great day. I can't wait to get these drums back to Sweetwater and get them in the studios and see what they can do. So thanks again. I thank you for coming over. It was a pleasure working with you all day. Have a safe trip back home. Say hi to my friends at Sweetwater and see you soon. Yeah.